What's going on guys? In this tutorial I'm going to be walking you through how to use the Neon Lights Photoshop action. So this here is the effect that the action creates automatically for you. So it works on photos, text, illustrations, any image really. Uh, all you need to do is load the Photoshop action and run it and this is what you'll get. So this here is in, uh, the original photo and I used the auto trace action which automatically creates the neons based on uh, contours in your image or edges. It also includes a manual trace action which allows you to draw over any image. So you can see the green lines here where I've traced over this dragon. And when you run the action it will then convert those to neons. Uh, it will also grab the original colors from your image and from there you can you know turn off the background layer to isolate your neon and then you know you can save that out with a transparent background and drop that onto your other work. Uh, this here is just an example of text uh, with you know a bit of a vector graphic here, and this was just this was the result that I got. I just painted mainly painted on some extra wires here just to demonstrate that. All right, let's go into Photoshop. So this here is the image I'll be using for this video. Uh, I'll leave time codes below if you want to jump to a specific section of this tutorial. Uh, firstly, I'll run through using the auto trace action, which will automatically uh, find. Uh, edges in your image to create the neons and then I'll run through an example using the manual trace action which which allows you to paint on uh, neons wherever you want them to appear. So in terms of uh, how many layers you can have before running the action it doesn't matter. So if you open up a Photoshop file or create a design that's built over a bunch of layers you can still run the action but just keep in mind that what it's going to do at the beginning of the action is uh, merge them all onto one layer. It's going to flatten your image okay so just keep that in mind so what we need to do first is load the photoshop action so there's two ways we can do that we can go to the window menu and go to actions okay and then the where if you've got the actions panel it'll pop up then click on this icon and go to load actions then navigate to where you um, downloaded the neon lights photoshop action so go inside the folder and just load the neon lights photoshop action by seven styles atn double click on that and then it will appear inside this folder here. Another way you can load the action, I'll just delete this, is just to um, navigate to where you downloaded uh, the action and then go inside and then just double click on the action file and then that will load inside Photoshop in the actions panel. Okay, so when you've loaded the action, what you wanna do is just twirl open that folder. And the first thing I'll point out is that you don't wanna play any actions below here. So I've just got a message here saying, don't play any actions below here. So all of these, don't need to touch those, don't rename them, don't play them. Uh, these are the three that you're only interested in. Uh, another thing I'll point out is that you can't rename the folder here. If you rename that folder, the action won't work at all. So just keep that as it is. So what we've got here is uh, this action here, photos, auto trace. This one is for illustrations or text, auto trace. And the third one is if you want to manually brush on your own neons. So that's the first thing you've got to decide. Do you want to do an auto trace or do you want to manually draw over your image? The next thing you need to decide is if you are working with a photo or an illustration, okay? So for this example, we're just gonna use the photo um, action. So all you need to do is select uh, the action and then click the play button. And the first thing that'll pop up is just a reminder message just to check the size of your uh, image. So what you need to do here is click continue and the image size window will pop up. So what you want to do is just check the size of your image here. So you can see mine is 4,500 by 3,475. So I recommend running this action on images that are at least 2,000 at the long dimension. Anywhere from 2,000 to say up to 5,000 is good. You can go larger than that. It'll just increase the playback time of the action and just create a bigger Photoshop file. So for this example, I might actually scale this down to 3,000. And when you're done with that, just click OK, and then the action will continue. And in about five or 10 seconds time, there's gonna be another one more pop-up window. Uh, so I'll explain to you what we do there in a sec. Okay, so here is the last pop-up message. And this is telling you to just brush on any missing or extra neon lines. So what you wanna do here is click stop, okay? And you'll notice that the action has stopped playing back. So what you wanna do here, if I'll just zoom in, is that the areas in red, the line, the red lines are where the neons are gonna be created for you. 
And what this step allows you to do is to have a look around your photo and brush on any extra lines that you want to add. Okay, so when the action stops, the brush is already selected for you. So if I just start, if I just click and start brushing around, you can see that um, there was a, you know, a green brush already created for me. And all you need to do is zoom in, have a look around. Now, this step is completely optional. If you don't want to add any extra lines, you don't need to. All you need to do is click the play button and then the action will finish. So for this example, just so that um, I demonstrate how to do this, I'm just going to um, just brush on a few extra lines here. So there's maybe a line on his nose, maybe on his mouth. Okay, and one thing I highly recommend you do here is adjust the smoothing, okay, on the brush. So if I bring this to zero and then start brushing, it's uh, the lines are very sensitive to the mouse movement. But if I increase the smoothing to 100%, it creates really smooth lines, okay, no matter how shaky my mouse is. So I usually keep this around 50%, but you can um, adjust it to what you want. So I'm just going to look around here. So I might want to add a little line here and on his leg here, just down there. If you want to hide all these, if you're brushing and you want to hide all the panels, hit tab, okay? And just take a look around, uh, maybe, I think that's good, or maybe just a bit here. But like I said, this is completely up to you. You don't have to do it, uh, but there just might be some obvious lines that the action's missed that you want to add back in. So when you've done that, um, and also another important thing when you're brushing these lines on, is just make sure the brush opacity is at 100%, okay? You want to keep that at 100%. So when you've done that, all you need to do is click play, okay? And then from here, the action will finish and will create all the neon lines for you. From here, the action takes about three to four minutes. So um, yeah, just check back on Photoshop in a couple minutes time and the effect will be done for you. So I'll just fast forward the video and we'll get to the result. Okay, when the action's finished, you'll just know that, uh, you'll just see that there's just a gradient uh, colored background. So I'll tell you what to do to reveal your neon in a sec. So firstly, what I wanna do is just collapse this action here and I'll just hide the actions panel for the moment. And looking in the layer panel here, I always suggest that uh, when you've run a Photoshop action is to collapse all the folders that are open after the action's complete. So if I just scroll down here, you'll see that there's a lot of folders, a lot of layers, and manually closing them one by one is a headache. So all you need to do is hold down Control Alt or Command Option and click on this arrow next to the folder icon, click on that, then release the keys and then reopen the folder and then everything is collapsed. So it's uh, much needed to work with. Another thing I point out is that this action automatically creates brushes for you during the action playback, which you use to uh, help create the effect. So if you hit B and then right click uh, anywhere of your backgrounds here to bring up the brushes panel. Uh, each time you run the action, it creates these four brushes. So you can just delete those if you want. You can shift select those and delete them. I might just delete these first three because I'm gonna use this brush um, to manually paint on some wires to show you how that works. So um, if you're running the action and noticing these brushes are building up, all you need to do is shift select them, right click and delete them. I couldn't automatically delete them um, during the action playback. Uh, so you just have to do them manually. So yeah, when you've run the action, uh, all you need to do here is turn on any one of these neon variation folders, okay? So I just turn number three here. You'll see that your neon appears. Now the contents of this folder are the same across all five uh, neon variations here. So we've got neon variation five down to one. And what this action does, it creates five different variations of um, neons for you. So you can see neon variation one is different to neon variation three. The obvious difference is that I can see is that uh, the spokes are visible on three uh, but not on one. So what you want to do firstly is just turn on these folders and um, just take a look at them and see which one you prefer. Okay. Um, Neon Variation 5 always tries to add a bit more detail um, down to Neon Variation 1, which usually has the least, okay? And an important thing to note about that step of um, during the action playback where you can brush on any extra or missing lines is that, is that those lines that you paint on will appear across all five Neon Variations, okay? So you'll notice that I've titled all these folders with delete folder if not used. So what I recommend you do if, let's say I want to use number three here, 
uh, I don't want to use five and four. I'll just shift select those and delete them. And I might just delete number one here. Okay, that'll just create a smaller Photoshop file for you, so less folders and layers to contend with. Uh, I'll leave on the neon variation two because I'll cover a section in this tutorial where we can um, stack the neons. Okay, so I'll get to that soon. So let's take a look inside these neon variation folders and see uh, what we can do in there. So I'll work my way down from the top here, uh, from the glow intensity layer down to the bottom. So the first one here is the glow intensity. So if I turn that on and off, you can see what that's doing. Okay, now this is a exposure adjustment layer. So if you just double click on this layer, there are three different settings you can play around with here. The exposure, uh, if you turn that one down, you can see what that's doing. So this slider is quite sensitive. Uh, you just want to use that a little bit. I think by default I have that at point, point 0.8. Uh, but definitely play around with that. You've got the offset, so you can drag this one down, which will remove a lot of the white haze. So uh, I think by default, I just had that at zero. And then you've got the gamma correction, works, which works similar to the offset. So if you drag it to the right, that'll um, filter out a lot of the haze and just add some overall contrast. So you can see the colors are a lot more defined. Uh, so play around with that one there as well. I might keep this one, let's just say, about there. All right, the next layer down here is Neon Tube Shine. So I'll just zoom all the way in here, so Control alt 0 or Command Option 0. And so what the Neon Tube Shine is are these tubes that run around, these reflective tubes that run around the neon. So if I just turn this off and on, so you can see that there. So just keep in mind that, uh, and I've got in brackets here, opacity. So the default opacity of this is at 70%. So if you want to increase the opacity of this, just drag that to 100%. And then those uh, tubes will be uh, much more prominent. So by default, it's at 70. So you can drag that opacity down lower. Say if I only want 30%, I can just hit three on the keyboard and it's much more uh, subtle then, okay? Now, you'll notice that I've also, I've kept the layer style applied to this layer. So if I double click on this, you can go in and edit the, um, the properties of this effect if you want. But I think most of the time you'll probably want to leave it as it is. So just cancel that. Zoom out, control or command zero. So the next layer down is the neon tube brightness. And I've got in brackets change color. So the way this works is if you just double click on this box. And if you change these gray values here. So if I make this darker, what you'll notice is that the tubes get darker. So or you can go brighter. It makes it look like the neon lights are much more uh, intense. So you can, you can adjust that uh, if you want. So if I just cancel that and zoom all the way in again, Control alt 0 Command, Option 0. And if I turn this layer off, you'll notice that all that is left is just the, the tubes, which is this layer above. So if I turn that off, then you basically have no neon lights, okay? So you want to keep those two on. And this one, let's just zoom back out. So this one is just for you to have a quick look at if you want to yeah, change the brightness um, of the neons. The next folder down is the plastic. So you can turn the plastic on and off. So just hide that so you can see what that is. <clears throat> so if we go inside this folder, there are two layers here. So the top one is the plastic. Got a brackets here, brush on layer to add more. So if I'll zoom back in here, and let's just say that I want to fill in these areas, all I need to do is select the layer, hit B, right click, uh, to bring up the brushes panel and I'm just going to use one of the general brushes here. I might just select this one, just bring the size up a bit. Okay, and you can just brush any color onto this layer and when I start brushing, uh, I might bring the smoothness down, it'll just start filling in those, those gaps. So you don't need to do this, but the option is there. You can also start brushing elsewhere and you know, it'll just, that effect will remain. Now, that is because I've kept the layer style on this layer as well. So if you double click on this, you will see there's all these settings for the plastic layer. So you can have a tweak of those if you want. So the next one down is the reflection, okay? Now this is a subtle effect, whoops. So you can see here the uh, neon tube reflecting there on the plastic. So if I turn this off, so you can see that there. So you can double click on this layer again, and you can adjust the uh, the opacity of that reflection through the color overlay setting here. So if I just exaggerate this and bring this up to 
80%, you'll see it's much more obvious. So uh, by default, it's at 30%. You can play around with these blend modes here. Uh, that's up to you. Okay, zoom back out. All right, so the next folder down is the Neon Glow Color and Radius. So if you turn this off, you'll see that this is where most of the effect happens. So let's go inside here and see what's going on. So there are two, there's another folder nested within here called the Neon Glow Radius. So I'm just going to expand that so we can get a full picture of what's going on here. So we'll start off from here. So if, if you turn off all of these, so you've got the color spread one narrow down to color spread six wide. So if I turn all these off, okay, all the color is gone from your subject. Okay, so this is where the color is. And you don't need to use all of these layers if you don't want to. Okay, so if you just want color spread six wide, you can turn all of these off. Okay, and then you're left with a much more of a um, general color spread throughout your subjects. So, um, so if I turn on color spread one narrow, okay, the color spread um, isn't very wide at all. You can see that uh, it's applying color more accurately throughout your subject versus six where it's much more blurred out. So you don't need to use all of them. Just by default, I've got them all turned on. Okay, so you can just turn off a couple if you want, and you can see every time you do that, you create um, a slightly different effect. Okay, so yeah, just experiment with those. Uh, if you want to use a single color, uh, you just turn this on. Okay, and then that'll apply a single color. I'll explain in a sec why it's filled in um, the background blue and how to how to disable that. Uh, and if you want to brush on your own colors, you just need to turn this layer on select this layer and then grab a brush so i'll just use a general brush again um, if you want to load the general brushes you just need to go to this drop down menu and go append the default brushes so that'll import the default brushes okay so i've just got a brush here and then you just want to pick a color uh, so i just pick, pick a purple and when you start brushing onto this layer uh, the color will show through so you might want to drop the opacity down so something Pretty, maybe about, oops, something like that. And then when you start brushing, you can see the color coming on, okay? So yeah, if you bring it to 100%, that will, and what you might also wanna do is disable these ones, okay? So then you're solely left with the color that you paint on here, okay? So that's how those work. So we'll just turn these back on for the moment. So this folder here is a neon glow radius. So if I turn all of these off here, You'll see again, there's no color. So the way this works is that these color layers will only appear, firstly, if these layers are turned on. Okay, so if I turn this one on, you can see the color starting to come through. But these layers also control the spread of the glow as well, okay? And the way I've set this up, I've set this up over three layers, glow spread small, medium, and large. So I turn on small, you won't really notice much. Well, you can, you, can. you see the color coming on. Uh, and the spread is quite narrow. Okay, so you can see there's not much glow emitting from there, but if I turn on the medium, it gets wider, and if I turn on the large, it gets even wider. Now, you can control the, uh, the amount of glow spread here. So for example, uh, I've got an, in brackets here, edit the opacity and the Gaussian blur. So if you twirl down, if you click on this arrow here, if you twirl that, twirl that down, you will notice that there's a Gaussian blur smart filter applied to this layer. So if you want to increase the radius of the glow, all you need to do is double click here on the Gaussian blur, and this will bring up the radius. So if I, drag, if I bring this in, you can see that if I bring it all the way to zero, you see it's, it's got a sharp edge, so you don't want that. But as you increase it, just keep going up, you'll see that the spread gets wider, and you can go really wide if you want, or as narrow as you want. I've just created three layers here as defaults for you to experiment with. And you can also uh, duplicate these layers, Control or Command J, or just hold down Alt or Option and drag one down to make a copy. And then you can create uh, another glow spread layer. So I can go into this one and increase this one even more, okay? Now, another thing to be wary of is the default opacities I've applied to these layers. So for example, this first one, uh, I might just turn off this one for the moment so we can see uh, yeah, and you can also just disable some if you don't want them. So if I turn this one off, you can see it creates a different kind of effect. 
So this one here, the opacity is set to 40%. So if I bring this to 100%, you'll see it creates much more of a, of a stronger glow. Okay, and again, you can adjust this, the blur amount. I've just set it to nine. You can increase that a little bit or bring this in even more. That's up to you. Uh, but just remember that this is set at 40%. This one here is set at 50%. So you can, of course, just drag this opacity down. Let's just bring this one down a bit. And then the large one, let's bring it down to zero and then increase it. Let's try 50%. Maybe leave it there at about 30%. Okay, so that's how those work. Now, the last one here, super wide color spread. This will spread out the colors as wide as it possibly can. Okay, so if you turn this one on, you'll see how the colors then spread all the way out to the edges of um, your document. So what you can do to increase the intensity of the color overall is just to increase the opacity. So you can see I've got here opacity. The default of this layer is quite low, 20%. Okay, so if I bring this exaggerated to 100%, you'll see that the spread of the color is much more intense, okay? And I think that creates a pretty cool effect. So if, that is that, if that's what you want, you can just increase that. Uh, just keep in mind it is by default set quite low um, so let's for this example let's just increase it to to about there 58 percent maybe 60 percent will do now let's just say that um, you don't want the color to extend fully to the board to the edges of your uh, of your image here what i like to do is sometimes just grab a selection from one of these color spreads so might if you hold down control Okay, actually before we do that, we'll delete the mask here on this layer. I'm just going to delete this layer mask. Now, if I hold down control and click on any one of these, you can see that it is selecting the uh, the color spread. So you can see from narrow, as we go down, the spread gets wider. So what we can do, we can restrict this super wide color spread glow to only appear within the boundaries of perhaps one of these color spread layers. So perhaps I only want this super wide color spread to appear uh, let's just go here, okay? So I'll control or command click on that layer to make the selection and then select the super wide color spread layer and then click the mask icon. So now that color spread, if I hold down older option and click on that mask to take a look, now it's um, restricted to only appear in this area in white, okay? If I hold down shift and then click on this mask to disable it, you can see the before and after. Now what you can also do is again just select this mask and we can blur it even more so we can go to filter blur gaussian blur and then we can just increase that increase the spread even more okay cancel that but i think for this example we might just um, disable it for the moment and just keep the color spread out like that so getting back to the single glow color layer so if i turn this on so the reason why this color is, is spreading out everywhere is because of the super wide color spread layer. So if I turn this off, you'll see that now that uh, this color is just restricted to the boundaries of these three layers, okay? So because this is a salt, this is filled in completely gray, it will fill um, your entire image with this color, okay? So you can just drop this opacity down if you want, just maybe use it a little bit. Uh, but for the long tutorial, uh, I'll just show you where you can set a different background color here through the ambient scene colors. All right. So let's just hide this for the moment and let's keep going down. So the next one down here is the neon plugs. Now these are those little black um, connectors you can see. I've just called them plugs. So if you just turn this folder off, okay, so you don't need to use them if, if you don't want to. Uh, they're there. Uh, so let's go inside this folder and I've just set up a few layers here. So this one here is the actual uh, plugs, okay? And I've just set up a simple uh, adjustment layer to change the color. So if you prefer them to be lighter, just double click on this box and just maybe just drag this up a bit, okay? So you can see they're much uh, less obvious now. So uh, you can do that if you want. I've also got the shadow. So you can see that shadows, uh, so you can see a little bit here, but shadows in this will emit from those plugs, okay? So 
you can turn that off if you don't want to, or I can just hold down Alt or Option, drag this down, make a copy. So you can see it's much more obvious there. So you can increase the shadow intensity if you want. And then the last one here is the glow. So wherever the, the uh, neon tubes come down to those plugs, uh, it's emitting a glow. Okay, so you can turn that on and off. It's up to you. And again, uh, if you want to increase the intensity of that glow, just make a copy, older option, drag down, and you can see that sort of boosts the intensity of those. All right. So another thing to remember with the neon plugs is that every time you run the action, their placement is randomized. All right, the next one down is neon tube shadow. So by default, you won't really notice this much because the opacity is quite low, but let's just increase this to 100%. So what you can see is that there is a shadow that sits just below uh, the neon lights. Now, I've kept this, smart, uh, this layer style active, so you can double click on this and adjust the settings of that shadow. So down the bottom here, drop shadow. You can um, increase this distance slider to push the shadow further down. You can adjust the angle here as well if you want. Uh, what was that, set to 90. So you can push this down for example, and then let's say increase the size, which will blur it out more. And then you could decrease the opacity here. So you can create different effects just through adjusting the shadow here. So that's there to use if you want. I might just turn this layer's opacity back down to about, about there. All right, the next one down is day to night. I've got in brackets here, edit the opacity and the Gaussian blur. So the Gaussian blur again is here. So it's as a smart filter. Now, uh, what this layer does is that it will darken everywhere around um, your subject here. So as you increase the opacity here, you notice that it's getting darker, okay? Now, a couple things you can do here, you can uh, double click on Gaussian blur and you can see that if I've dragged this inward, you'll see that the um, the blur is becoming less and less spread. But if I increase this, it will get wider. Okay. Now, if you if you import a background into your design here, the background will only be visible where this layer isn't um, isn't visible. Okay. So you can see here on the thumbnail how in the middle here our subject is transparent. So uh, if you import a background here, the background will probably only be visible around this area, just around your subject. So what you can also do uh, is, let's just increase this to 100% for the moment. And if you zoom out and then hit Control Command T to scale, we can scale this up more. Okay, so you can see there how um, it's creating more light around here. Hit Enter, zoom back in. So now if you import a background, you'll see the background visible around here, okay? But you can also, I might just undo all that. And let's just increase, well, no, I'll keep it there. So you can you can decrease the opacity of this layer if you don't want it to be, so it creates more of a um, subtle light fall off by just decreasing the opacity. So that one is there for you to use if you want to darken um, around your subject a bit. Let's turn that off for the moment. So that is everything inside the neon variation folders, all right? So I've kept this one around. So let's see what we can do with, you know, keeping uh, additional neon variation folders in the Photoshop file. Firstly, you can just turn them on and stack them. So you get all the glows and the tubes. Uh, so you can see with this one turned on, you can see the neon tubes are appearing in a slightly different spot. You can see his elbow there, uh, and through his leg. Uh, but just keep in mind that when you're stacking them, just be aware of the layers that are turned on. So for example, in Neon Variation 2, the day to night one is turned on. So you can see that that's darkening there. Um, and you've also got the uh, super wide color spread that's on by default as well. So that's just doubling up on, on that. So you can see how I am turn that on and off. It's creating a bit more of a color spread. But what I want to do here, let's just say we just want these tubes to to be visible, but not emit any glow or color. So just like they're turned off. So what would we want to turn off? We don't want any color or glow spread coming from them. Uh, we don't want the plastic. Uh, we'll keep the neon plugs, but inside the neon plugs, we don't want them to emit a shadow. Oh yeah, we'll keep the shadow on, but we don't want them to emit a glow because we've turned the colors off and the glow. Uh, what else? 
the neon tube brightness. We don't want them to be bright, so we can either just turn it off. So you can see in his leg there, you can see the tubes. Let's just zoom in a bit. Uh, so you can see there the tubes, how they're turned off. But what we might do is we might turn the brightness on, uh, but just tone down their brightness. So just double click on here and let's just make these darker. Something like that. So it kind of just looks like they're sitting in the background there turned off. I'll click OK. So that's just another way you could um, you could stack these neon variation folders is that have the one on top uh, be the neons that are turned on and the ones below you could turn off all the relevant layers and folders to make it look like there's just extra neons uh, but they're turned off. So the next one down is wires. So by default, there's no wires on. So if you turn the file on or off, they're not visible. Uh, if you go inside, I've set up five different uh, wires that are created automatically, but just by default, I've got them turned off. So the ones in blue, so all you need to do is turn them on. And you'll notice when you turn them on, you'll see wires start appearing behind all the uh, neon tubes. So just turn them on and um, more will appear. Now, if you don't like the result, or don't like the combination of where they're appearing, um, you can just use this layer here in yellow, uh, brush on your own wires here, okay? You can also use the mask to brush out uh, any wires where you don't, uh, that you don't want, basically. So if you select the brush and brush black onto the mask here, it will hide uh, those wires. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and what you can also do here is just change the color. So you just double click on these colored boxes here. And then if you want a white wire, you can just do that. And you can see that the, that wire in the back there, if I go to black, and then back to white, you can see that working in the background, okay? So if you just want those extra details, you can do that. Now, uh, for brushing on your own wires, so if you just select that layer, hit B, uh, get the brush tool out, right click. Uh, so you can, if you remember uh, earlier I mentioned about deleting extra brushes gener generated by the action. Well, you can keep this little one around if you want to brush on more wires, okay? So if I select that brush or, or you can just grab like a general brush, uh, maybe like this one and just increase the hardness all the way to 100%. Uh, the size is dependent on what size, what thickness you want the wires to be. So uh, if I start brushing now, you can see the wires appear. Okay, now, um, again, what you want to do is increase the smoothing. So I've increased this to about 50% and then start brushing. You see that no matter how sort of shaky my mouse is, they appear quite smooth. All right. So what you can do is just, you know, be a bit creative and um, just start drawing on wires just wherever you want. Maybe not that second one there. What I like to do is just draw them between these black um, plugs, okay? Just make it look like they're running into there. Um, yeah. Just like that. Uh, and you can increase the thickness, just use the left and right square brackets. So if you want uh, some thicker wires, you can, you can do that. Okay? Now, if you want to uh, create another layout, uh, for brushing on your own. So maybe you want another set of wires but a different color. What you can do is hold is just shift select these two, hold down older option, then drag them up to create a copy. Okay. So now we've just created a copy of the wires that we've just painted on. Um, but I want to delete uh, all the ones on this layer. So I'm just going to hit Control A and then delete. Select all and delete. So now those wires are gone. I can now brush on a second set of wires here. Might just turn down this thickness a bit. So maybe I want another set of wires here looping over that first one. And then you could change the color if you want. Just like that. Okay. So that's how the wires work. Okay, the next folder down here is the ambient scene colors. So if you twirl this one open, there are three layers. Okay, now I'm just gonna zoom out a bit here. So by default, uh, this one is turned on. It's called Use Image Colors for Ambient Scene Color. And I've got in brackets here, Opacity. So what this one does, if I turn this on and off, you can see how it's spreading out the 
uh, the original colors of your image across the entire um, canvas here. And it's similar to, if you remember this layer here, down the bottom, the super wide color spread. So it's just another, it's another layer similar to that, um, but allows you to, uh, especially through this layer here, use a different color if you want. So let's just say I want to keep the original colors here of my subject, but the ambient scene color, I want to make a, uh, let's just say like a dark blue. Okay, so it allows you to create that combination. All right. And if you want to brush on your own ambient colors, you can do that with this layer. So make sure you turn this one off. Okay, and so if you want different colored glows to appear in the background here, select this layer and then just grab a soft brush and, you know, um, start brushing some colors onto this layer. All right, the next layer down is just an empty layer called place your own background here. So this is just a reminder, this is where you want to import your own background texture or scene. So I'll just import a texture. I've got, I've got a file, place embedded, and I've just got a texture sitting here. I'll zoom out and I'm just going to rotate this around and scale it up. Okay, so then you can see the neons are all sitting on top of your background texture. You can see the wires are coming through uh, much more now because we're sitting on a lighter colored background. So if the wires are appearing too strong or too dark, you can just go inside the wires folder again and just change the colors. Change the colors there. All right, let's hide this texture for the moment. And then this one here is just the background color. So if you just want to work with a solid colored background, you can do that. Uh, you can change the brightness. Uh, I've optimized this effect to work uh, on on lighter color bracket backgrounds as well. Just keep in mind though, um, if uh, keep in mind the strength of the neon glow uh, radius on a light background. If it's too strong, just jump into these and lower the opacity down. So I might just change this to a darker color again. Something maybe a little bit lighter. Okay, so the final two layers are just overall adjustment layers at the top here. So we have overall color saturation. I've got in brackets here, opacity. So this is a vibrance uh, adjustment layer. So you can see by default, I've turned the vibrance up on the colors to the max 100. So if I just uh, reset that, you'll see that a lot of the color comes out of your design. So just keep in mind that this is at 100. 100. Uh, you can also increase the saturation, which will uh, further increase the intensity of the colors. So you might want to do that. Uh, this one down here is overall quick contrast. Uh, by default, this opacity is at 10%. I'll just zoom in a bit here. So this is a quick way to add some overall contrast to your design. So I'm just going to exaggerate this and bring this all the way up about 70%. So you can see what that does, adds a lot more contrast. Um, so I go back to zero and let's try, let's try about 30%. Okay. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely experiment with this layer. Um, it brings out the colors and the details, uh, seemingly a lot more. So that's a, uh, good one to use. So next let's go over how to save out your neon design on a transparent background. So a couple of layers that you need to turn off. You want to turn off the background color layer. You want to turn off your original image. You want to turn off the ambient scene colors as well. Okay. And other ones to be aware of if, uh, if you go into your neon variation folders, if you've got day to night turned on. Okay. So if I turn that on, just be aware that if you export this as a PNG with day to night turned on, um, it's going to have hard borders. So you can see that this layer uh, is darkening everything. So you're going to export it and it's going to have hard, hard borders. So if you don't want that, just turn that off. Okay. And another one to be aware of is in the Neon Glow Radius folder, uh, the super wide color spread. If uh, you're not, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're not restricting the spread of the color to a particular area, so you can see in the mask here, I'm restricting it to only appear in white. If I disable that mask, that color is going to be spread to the boundaries. So again, if you export this, uh, with the transparent background, you might get colors that are creating a hard edge against the border. So just be aware of that one as well, okay? And you can use that technique like I described earlier of just um, use, uh, selecting one of these color spread layers. So holding down control or command and clicking to select one. 
and then restricting the super wide uh, color spread to that area. So hold down control and click on these layers and then um, select the super wide color spread layer and click the mask. So that's restricted to there. So now uh, this is all ready to go to be saved out as a PNG. So I can just go um, control alt S or command option S and save this as a PNG. I'll just, uh, just save this out. Give that a second. So now let's just open up a photo. Here's one here. And let's import our neon design into this. So I'll just go file, place embedded, and then just navigate to the PNG I just saved there. And here it is. So I can just scale this up and move that into position. So you can see you'd obviously want to um, not have those wires when you export it as a PNG or whatever you want to do. Uh, so what I like to do is after I've imported it into the scene, you can do things like duplicating the layer. So uh, control or command J to duplicate it, then change the blend mode to like screen. And then from there, uh, add some blur to it. So go to filter, blur, go to blur, blur that out, and then just lower the opacity right down. So I'll just drag this opacity down to zero and then just increase it a bit. And there you go. So lastly, we're going to go over how to use the manual trace action. So this one here, brush on your own neon lines. So this will allow you to basically just trace over any part uh, of an image to generate your neons. All right, I've got my photo open here. So let's twirl open the actions panel. And so to create your own neons, you want to select the brush on your own neons, manual trace action. Select that, click play, and you'll get the same pop-up as the other two, just asking you to check the size of your image. So click continue. I'm happy with that size, so I'll click OK, and we'll just wait a few seconds, and the action will prompt us to uh, then start brushing on where we want to create the neons. Okay, so here is the next step, uh, brush on your neon line. So all you want to do here is click stop, and the brush is already selected for you. So all you need to do is start brushing. You'll see that once you start brushing, you'll get a green line. So don't worry about changing the colors of your brush, because the way this action works is that it takes the colors from... Uh, wherever you're tracing over. So if I was to just draw over the dragon's eye here, it would be taking those green tones to generate the neon, okay? So what I might do, I might just start uh, tracing over the dragon here just to speed this up and um, yeah, we'll get to that point. All right, so I've just finished uh, tracing over all the areas of the image that I want to turn into neons. So just a reminder that when you're brushing to remember to increase the smoothing as this will create much smoother lines and um, just re reduce the shakiness, uh, particularly if you're using a mouse. So if I'm, if I draw to zero, um, the lines are much more reactive to the mouse movements. But if I increase it to 100 and wiggle my mouse around, lines become a lot more smooth. Okay, so 50% I find is a good number, but that is up to you. So when you've finished brushing, uh, all you need to do is click the play button. That's it, and then the action will take about three to four minutes from there, and then. Uh, you can jump to all the layers and start editing. So this is the result I got from uh, the lines that I painted on. So the only things I changed here was that I uh, turned off the background color layer. So by default, this is on. So you can see there was the result. I just turned that off so that the neons fell down onto the original image. Uh, I also increased the day to night to 50%. So by default, that's at 10%. So you can see as I increase this, it gets darker. Okay. And I also just increased the super wide color spread to 50%. I think from memory that's at around 20% by default. So you can see as I increase that, uh, the colors spread much wider. So in combination, you can combine that super wide color spread with day to night to get some uh, some pretty cool effects. All right, so that's how you, that's how you use the Neon Lights Photoshop action. Uh, just a reminder, check out the time codes below uh, just to jump to a particular section of the video if you want. Uh, also take a look at the first link in the description if you want to see more examples of the effect. Uh, yeah, so I hope you like the effect and thanks so much for your support.